My focus is not on keeping a government in power or helping a political leader win or lose. My job is to see that people don't die. Opnieuw dreigt hongersnood in Afrika. De Wereldvoedselorganisatie verwacht 38 miljoen slachtoffers. The society that relies on food aid or on any aid, indefinitely the society that is slowly dying. If these pictures are out, then there is pressure on us. But the minute they are out, you know, there are more pressing international issues and Ethiopia is not in the map. Om de paar jaar wordt de noodklok geluid. Steeds opnieuw wordt geld ingezameld voor noodhulp. Is er geen structurele oplossing te vinden? Factor gaat op zoek in Ethiopië. In Harar, zo wil de legende komen in tijden van hongersnood hyena's naar de stad om voedsel te zoeken. De mensen in Harar bedachten daar iets op. Ze zetten vlak buiten de stadsmuren voedsel neer voor de hyena's. Als de hyena's het voedsel niet aanraken, komt er een pestepidemie, zegt de legende. Als ze het half opeten, komt er een goede oogst. En als ze al het voedsel opeten, dan komt er een hongersnood. Essentially, there are the same number of hungry people in the world today as there were 10 years ago. We've made virtually no progress. What's happening in Africa right now, with 15 million people at risk in southern Africa, 18 million people at risk in the Horn, uh, the Western Sahel, the, the conflict in West Africa, ongoing issues in Uganda, uh, the Congo, Tanzania, Kenya, Angola. Uh, we're getting close to having our hands full. I'll introduce you by starting the video. Then I'll stand up again so For the fifth and last time, TNT sponsored the Dutch Open Golf Championship. In June 2002, a delegation from TPG led by CEO Peter Bakker meet James Morris, chairman of the WFP, the World Food Program of the United Nations. A new trend. Het bedrijfsleven gaat in ontwikkelingshulp. Peter Bakker, directeur van het post- en logistieke bedrijf TPG, steunt de Wereldvoedselorganisatie met maar liefst 5 miljoen euro aan geld en logistieke hulp. TPG is een Dutch company. So for this company to come forward, born in this location, um, is special. Mr. Bakker, why does a company do this? Well, the first reason is because it feels good. Uh, we, we think we can really contribute something to the good work of WFP. Uh, we've tested ourselves. We've been sponsoring uh, the golf tournament, as you know, for a couple of years. But in the current day and age, I really think companies have a responsibility. Uh, I believe TPG has some pretty unique skills. WFP is fighting a, a terrible, tragic uh, problem in the world. James Morris, topman van de Wereldvoedselorganisatie, is op tournee in Afrika. Hij bezoekt Ethiopië om zich op de hoogte te stellen van de situatie. De wereldpers reist in zijn kielzog mee. Het is belangrijk dat ik ga en begrijp en zie and be able to tell the story to donors that are going to need to help us to provide food to save people's lives. Until very recently, the government's rural policy has been very much supported by, by uh, the European Union, by DFID and the rest of them, uh, the donor community. It is just recently 
that issues of institutional reform and things of that sort have started because to come. They face, because they face this emergency. It, yes. doesn't, it doesn't work. Yes, because it, it, in a way, uh, it, you see, for those donors that have been supporting the Ethiopian government, it kind of blew in their face. I mean, this, you know, this was supposed to be a government that is interested in rural development, that is, that is you know, going to get this country out of its, uh, uh, you know, low level of production and uh, voila you have uh, a tremendous famine so i think to a certain degree there is some embarrassment on the part of donors themselves I pulled into Nazareth, was feeling about half past dead. i just need some place i promise you we'll do our best to see that you have food to feed your children <laughs> and please know that you're not here alone that the rest of the world loves you and cares for you and will do its very best to provide food to be helpful. I went looking for a place to hide When I saw the common and the devil walk inside the side I said, hey, common, come on, let's go around town She said, I gotta go, but my friend is The situation in Ethiopia, Eritrea, and some would include the Sudan, is is very serious. Uh, Ethiopia, Eritrea, both depend on rain-fed agriculture for essentially their food production, and they had no spring rains this past year. In Ethiopia, uh, they'll have 20% less this year, and somewhere between uh, 10 and 12 million people at risk. Isan kabanan isan muhimnan iyiti tunu baate tinenar isan namni haganaga gaurufe namni nafse nama rabbi gadi ti adanu kunu ti rufe nu argun kun galat gudda. أما ودا إنسان يعني تنين من أنكم أرجمو من أنكم رام سمتين إلمي كنا كوج أتين إنجرا كيس أبو فتين إنجرا كم دللا على نودا تاجر كم دللا جنود أبو تاجر كم دللا جنود أبو تاجر not to fall victim yet again to famine and drought. This is Paul Clark for you to be live in Ethiopia. Thank you for allowing our group to come be with you this morning. Thank you. Famine is a product of poverty more than anything else. What famine happens when farmers who have produced in year X do not have enough food production in that good year to keep them for more than one crop season. You know, when the rains fall the next crop season, then they don't have anything to fall back. The society that relies on food aid or on any aid indefinitely is a society that is slowly dying. Aid is supposed to be a temporary uh, relief from certain uh, uh, 
uh, sudden disasters. I mean, aid is becoming in the Ethiopian context, you know, a continuous thing, and it's no more, no more uh, temporary aid. It's becoming structural, and that's what we have. You know, the only way that the society can uh, uh, can survive uh, is if it can achieve food security in its own uh, uh, territory and hope to achieve it within its own resources. Het regent veel te weinig. De dieselprijs is hoog en als het vee al niet sterft, moeten veel boeren het verkopen, net als al hun andere bezittingen. In sommige delen van Ethiopië wordt nog wel geoogst, maar dat is bij lange na niet genoeg. Six, seven months ago, especially, you know, 2001 was a very good crop year. 2000 was also quite reasonable. 2001, when the, uh, the harvest time came and it was clear that output has significantly increased, the first thing that had happened is price literally collapsed. <laughs> Handelaren kopen de oogst voor een lage prijs, om het later in tijden van nood met forse winst aan de boeren terug te verkopen. De traders uh, feel they are only responsible you know, for uh, to earn as much profit as possible. And uh, so I think you know if there are organized people also on the other end of the of the area, they can make you know really some sort of uh, network with the surplus growing areas, uh, so that, you know, they can have access, you know. Usually they buy, you know, what is the current price today? 100, uh, 130, 125 birr per quintal. And uh, sometimes they can sell as, as high as for 200 birr. So the margin is very, uh, very attractive, you know. <laughs> There are uh, a number of factors. One is uh, the social obligation that they have to discharge, you know, uh, right after harvest time. In, uh, in this particular region, this is an area where uh, a time when weddings are organized, where uh, people start uh, even exchanging gifts or this, uh, you know, all sorts of things. And therefore, you know, they need liquid cash. That's one. The other thing is this is also the time when the government demands for the payment of uh, land use and agricultural income tax. And it is also the time when the, the government uh, prices, you know, for the payment of fertilizer. <laughs> Oud-minister van Landbouw Zegei Asfau helpt boeren met het opzetten van coöperaties. Om de handelaren voor te zijn slaan ze hun graan zelf op, zodat ze een voorraad hebben in slechte tijden. But who starts purchasing? De uh, farmers are now uh, already started selling their produce. And uh, this is a store of uh, 1,000 quintal capacity. Mm -hmm. And uh, the cereal bank is uh, an association of uh, willing farmers. There are something, something like 250 farmers mm -hmm. who bring their produce directly and sell it to their own uh, cereal banks. The whole idea of the cereal bank is uh, to buy grain uh, when it is cheap on behalf of farmers. The farmer themselves buy, and uh, at the end, at the beginning of the June, you know, when the hungry uh, months set in, they will sit and decide by the general assembly the amount of grain that they would like to have for their own food security, and then decide on the portion of the grain that needs to be sold at the market prices. <coughs> Can you ask him? Yeah. Who, who's the boss? Is he the boss or is he the boss? It's his grain. <laughs> yeah. One kuni, the bank in Kunalisati, Moketi Singer. Kenya, Kenya, Kenya. 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 Kenya.
akababi kana ugalalu achi tana achi male akababi ala biyatin kenya kun ille wanna baaye qabu nati fakkatu wan maundano e minani si birra ra chaame baran ma hir isaba ye turey baru makana dufa kana andar be kama fundura kana be qelan ille hababo tana fejira garbun ille akasmat hababo tana fejira gara kenya akababi kenya kana fa kenya biyatinu arachi du embe ku male kara kana namma baaye risa turey ani san jedanu banki midani asitti dabachun kun rakko akabela kala akka qorichat itti fudattu inta jettani yaddu jettani ay kasma tifurati manni kun irga garu mu kadametu nu ijarame ugu marakina kenye tolu da isa simu akka qabeyna kenye ti kanibrata kenye ti guddo mata kenye oti lalle eti bul e uga laman barnati e war walda kenye ti gati ti mbita mirra gati hala gabatin duntani hala gabaa jiddu galeesati akara ko min anir da wantu ko tino da mulannan bara sanyitif laalamit war walda kee sajiru sanyiti gurgurame jir inni maali da ka qarqar sajecha da qarqar sa teef jecha war sanyi da frakina war qaban sanyi akasma simo min anya ta si shamata tanit mi ganna sanyi ajetu baani amma simo fumburattu min anum tibiya kee sajiru kunu ega ummatu manaanu kana ti ti fayyada ma jecha do do min anna nu kana dabami garu wa qattatu lu nanu kenya kunu wanna kana andura minani ni rakina qabneef ee gaba adisaba ti tidu hanina gadu na dadda si bitani ganna baranatu ee si de manitu wanu jira Van de 58 miljoen Ethiopiërs leeft 85% als boer op het platteland. De meesten verdienen te weinig om het hoofd boven water te houden. En daarom blijven ze jaar na jaar afhankelijk van hulp. Aun is bu rafsi rani, akil mi di mukofar, wah mukofar, marid mukofar, akil mi andi andi, marid ini mi isbo tu gara gara antin, ini cat fallega. Wanya thani ke fitu ni berbat dan mum berbat thani. Arkan ini fena. Aku nak lagi ni cuma. Ilam mai narkan ni. Narkan. Ilam gara gara kan narkan ni, thani tu isbi nama. Jil tu orang yang saya tak kan. Magala sih le. They want, but they didn't get. Malif. Malif. Kongkoda. Kongkoda. Yes, we Ethiopians, we have a certain months of sunshine. So then, it's thirty months of sunshine. Really good. Really good, but sometimes a little bit strong too much because we don't get enough rain, and that's why. De boeren die het niet meer kunnen bolwerken, trekken naar de stad om eten te zoeken. In lange rijen zitten ze bij de moskee of de kerk te bedelen. Ze kauwen de hele dag kat, een lokale drug die de honger stilt. Apa simidal murukun? Apa simidal murah? Dan tak kisah dia mana apa simidal murah Ahmad Usman. Jadi, murah beli lu fe. Insya Allah kerjut mana? No, we don't have any sin. Mana rakyat? Kita 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 kita
Oh. Yes, is you know me tomorrow? Oh. He stays here. Is he making tagging yellow? Me, 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 they go to each door and the people who know, you know, they have some food from villages and food. Uh, they take some food from each uh, uh, house. Yeah, the houses they beg and uh, the leftovers. They give. Guess what? People, you see some people dying from famine or from some simple disease because with no food and then at the same time infections, that kills a lot of people and you see a lot of dead people around. I think there are too many farmers doing uh, the same thing for a very long time um, uh, because of that output is low, productivity is low, uh, even in good periods they will not produce sufficient rain to, uh, sufficient output to maintain their, uh, their uh, family. That we, we have to completely rethink the whole agriculture uh, sector. Hello. He's a correspondent with Middle East Broadcast. They simply have no water, and now they have no cash to buy seeds and fertilizer. So, other parts of Ethiopia have done a very good job. This is an emergency situation now. It's no more uh, issue of development as such. This is a question of saving lives. So, I mean, right now what the government can do, and I don't think there is any other option, is to save as much lives as possible by supplying this food. There is no other option. But this should be a very important moment for us as Ethiopians to start to look not only about the current crisis, but about how to avoid this crisis from happening again. You are the country in Africa who's getting most emergency food aid and food aid and least development aid. That's right. In all of Africa. Well, I don't know if it is in all of Africa, but it is one of the least um, uh, development, development aids yeah. per capita. Uh, per so what does that say about donors? It says that their engagement seems to be much more in temporary relief, which has a lot to do with the pressures that they're facing from their own constituencies, more than a more constructive and long-term engagement. As a strategy, not only for the overall development of the economy, but for the development of agriculture itself. Agriculture, the size holding of agriculture has to increase. It just, there is no other option. You can put fertilizer as much as you want. The size is getting small, and there must be that size ought to increase. For that to happen, population pressure has to, to be eased. Therefore, the, the long-term strategy ought to include not only the development of agriculture, but the development of agriculture through the development of other sectors. That, I think, is very important, and that's what the government ought to consider.